This is the 2022 Volkswagen Jetta, and it's not really much loved in the world these days, except for here in the US and of course Brazil. Good news is VW is still dedicating resources to producing an affordable, sporty, compact car, and it still offers a manual transmission. I'll be honest, I much prefer hatchbacks to trunks, but what if this Jetta GLI was better than a GTI? We're going to find out today. So VW has made it really easy to choose which Jetta GLI you would prefer to buy because there's only one model now. Uh, the base model's gone away and this is the Autobahn model, the only one that you can spec out. The only choice that you can make is whether to choose a six-speed manual or a seven-speed GSG. Obviously from the outside it looks very much like a Jetta but it has been revised slightly for the 2022 model year. So the front grille and bumper has been restyled with a bit more of a sporty look, especially like this honeycomb look here and here. It's got this red piping here and then specifically around here, these are not real vents, but uh, this red detailing looks quite sporty and kind of cool and something that uh, somebody will notice in their rear view mirror and hopefully get right out of your way. And at the rear, we have got some mild design changes, this sort of honeycomb section here filled in and then these larger open exhaust which look cool they look kind of sporty and then the exhaust system has been upgraded and it sounds media it sounds better it's got more of a baritone to it um, I really like it uh, sport and customized modes you will get that extra exhaust sound and if you get bored with it you can simply turn it off by putting it into normal Standard all around are these 255 45s running on these 18-inch uh, wheels. Uh, they put these Hankook uh, All Seasons on. Um, they're not too bad. Um, my preference would be to wait for these to wear out and get myself a set of Michelins. Obviously being front drive with the kind of torque that it has, it can spin its wheels and lose traction from time to time. Brakes are also really good. All around painted this nice jazzy red color, giving that additional sporty feel to the car. So how does it stack up against its best buddy, the Golf GTI? Well, on paper, the Golf GTI kind of has it beat, but numbers aren't always everything. So I priced these out, uh, equivalent Autobahn models for the GTI and the Jetta GLI with $395 of paint plus DSGs. And obviously there's a huge gap, over $40,000 for the GTI versus $32,780 for the GLI. So one win for the Jetta right there. But the GTI has it beat on power, 241 versus 228, 273 foot-bounds versus 258. Both have the same seven-speed dual clutch. The Golf beats it from zero to 60 by a second. I don't think that matters so much. Only beats it by one second to the quarter mile as well. And the Jetta, it's got a little bit of a bigger rear end, weighs a little bit more. Also loses out 14 cubic feet of space inside versus 17 cubic feet for the GTI. The GLI does win on fuel economy by a little bit. 26 city, 37 highway, 30 combined. This is a pretty damn fuel efficient car. This Turbo 4 has got to be one of the most common Turbo 4s and probably, in my opinion, one of the best too. It's such a great little engine. I know I said it has 228 horsepower, 258 foot-pounds of torque. I feel like it has more than that. Uh, we know that VW and Audi, actually most of the Germans are very conservative with their power estimates. The tester here that I am driving today has a seven-speed DSG, but obviously you can get that six-speed manual if you wish. It also has a full limited slip differential at the front and the adaptive suspension system as well to help with the handling. So with 14 cubic feet, 14.1 cubic feet of space in the back, it is actually pretty spacious and you do actually get a little spare wheel in case of emergencies. Uh, it's got a nice wide opening and you can fold the seats flat to get more stuff in. Ultimately, it does not have the practicality of a GTI, but I think most people would be able to make this work. So it's pretty spacious in the back, actually. This seat is all the way back. Obviously, this one has, because Autobahns all get leather seats, so no more cloth seats available. You got a nice little center armrest with a couple of cup holders. Again, you can put these seats down if you want to use this additional space for storage. What I don't like is there are no rear 
vents, so no AC or heating in the back. But other than that, I think it's pretty solid. So it's pretty nice in the front. Um, they've added this uh, red contrasting stitching here uh, on the seats, which looks really nice. On the, the gear shifter, you've got this little red outline here. There's a little bit of red on the steering wheel as well. Seats, for the most part, are pretty comfortable, really long in the leg, as is usual with VWs. And this one comes with memory seats. It's got electric, pretty much everything, but there is no power for the passenger which is kind of annoying. Um, there also isn't a seat height, which is equally annoying. Um, even if it was hand cranked, it would be nice to be able to move that seat. It feels like you're sitting in a hole when you're on the passenger side. But other than that, it's actually really, really nice. The center console is neatly organized. Uh, the only problem is I feel like there's some cost cutting going on here. It's quite a hard plastic substance they're using on here. It doesn't feel as quality as you like, but everything else feels really, really solid. So in the front, hooray for VW for not following what they did with the GTI and adding those horrible capacitive touch everywhere uh, and no physical buttons for anything, everything contained in the touch screen. So this pretty much is like the GLI before it's got a center screen right here in the center stack. It's got your media, telephone, nav, you name it. It works really well. It's super fast to use. Uh, obviously the best part is pushing a button for mode where you can change it from custom. You can go ahead and adjust your DCC steering, front diff lock, drivetrain, engine sound, and your adaptive cruise control system. Uh, simply by pushing this little arrow and choosing sport so max attack on that particular one or you can scroll through eco comfort normal sport and then back to custom you got a menu for the car as well you can check your vehicle status tire pressures you name it whatever you want to do and here go to additional settings it's a really nice slick uh, menu system uh, ambient lighting, so color depends on the driving mode selection settings. So if you're in super aggressive mode, um, you you get one particular color, or you can do a manual mode where you can select whatever color you want. I just leave it in automatic. So down below, yes, physical HVAC controls. We love it. There's a Wi-Fi charger at the front here, which will charge my phone through its case. Happy about that. Uh, this side has a couple of blanks. I'm not sure what would go there, but you've got your track control off. There's your mode button, uh, stop, start, and then your parking brake, engine start, stop, and then a proper real shifter, not a silly little button. Again, even though the quality of the plastics isn't great, I like the way that this whole center stack is laid out. Then you got two decent sized cup holders, a weird little thing here which won't fit my phone, um, or probably anybody else's. Now, unfortunately, you can't get away from capacitive touch buttons here. These are on the steering wheel on both sides. And um, if you put your palm on them accidentally, you start changing some settings. But other than that, I like this newly designed wheel. It's slightly thicker than the old one. I like this design here. It's really grippy where you should be holding the wheel uh, at quarter to three anyway. And yeah, really nice piece of design. And then the VW digital driver dash is still really good. You can make changes to it. Um, you can change lane keep assists. You can change all your safety systems. I like to have a speedo in the middle, but you can scroll through. Uh, you can check your range. You can just scroll through this and choose anything you want to show on the middle section as well. And then if you hit view, you can move things around. You can put navigation across the whole view. And you've got fuel on the right, you got temperature on the left. It's really, really nice. Now this one does come with a sunroof. You know my thoughts on sunroofs. Uh, I guess you can't avoid it because there's only the Autobahn trim and it has this really flimsy little net which Audi and VW love so much, but it lets the heat in, particularly in Southern California where it's really hot. So yeah, all in all, this is a pretty nice place to spend some time in. Uh, very happy with what Volkswagen has done. The fact that they still have this car is great. But anyway, now what we need to do is see exactly how this car drives. So I've got it in my most aggressive mode here, custom. 
So let's go. Get off this little bumpy bit right here. So this essentially drives very, very much like the last gen Golf GTI with some slightly subtle differences, which I think maybe because it's wearing these all season tires, they're hand coops, they're not bad. They're not Bridgestones. Um, and, and these aren't too bad. I mean, they do squeal a little bit and, and they could use some more grip, you know, given the torque that's running through the, uh, just the front wheels, but it drives almost identically. Steering is great. The R brakes are really responsive. Yeah, from the inside, you, you definitely feel like this is a GTI, except for one other thing. I feel like even in the most sporty modes, it rolls just a little bit more. I feel like maybe they've set the adaptive suspension in the aggressive modes to be a little softer than a GTI, which I kind of like. So it's sort of playful. It's not as precise as the new gen GTI, obviously, but it's also a lot cheaper. Of course, you know, yeah, okay, it's not as good as a GTI either, obviously this generation or the last one, but it's also almost $8,000 cheaper than the current car, so you know, if you want some cheap thrills, this might be your better way to go. Plus, almost $8,000 is a lot of fuel to have fun with. It's chuckable, feels good. I mean, you, use, you lose the utility of having a hatchback, but this is still a great car. And I, in my opinion, this four-cylinder turbocharged engine that VW and Audi have been using for years is one of the all-time greats. And in this one, they seem to have gotten rid of the, uh, the turbo lag, especially from a stop. A little bit of wheel scrabble if you put the power down mid-bend, but no complaints. Yeah, acceleration is brisk. It's not super rapid but it's fast enough for most people, I would imagine. As I said before, my preference is not for a trunk. It's, I just prefer the, the golf style, more utility, more space inside. In my opinion, it's better looking, but a lot of people here have the uh, opposite opinion. They do like the way that the Jetta looks, which is why you know, VW has uh, continued with this particular model. I'm glad it's a good alternative if you don't want to spend quite that much money and obviously the interior in my opinion is better too although we do know that Golf uh, the VW has said that they are going to do away with all of that screen stuff touch sensitive and, and all these annoying buttons and replace it with some physical buttons again much the same way that this car has that very impressed with the brakes you can definitely shed some speed Very safe, predictable handling. Holds the line pretty well around that particular left-hander. This is a fun car. Yeah, cheap thrills. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get this kind of performance. Now, there's alternatives. The uh, Hyundai Elantra N is an equally good car, if not possibly better than this one. Then you got the Civic uh, SI. That's a pretty good little car too. Only available in a stick shift, so you gotta row your own in that. This, you've got the best of both worlds. I do like this DSG, probably one of my favorites. Um, I don't mind driving a manual for a week, but I think this might be a better alternative and you pay a little bit extra, but not a whole lot. 
to get this thing to shift for you. And I find that the standard uh, Golf slash Jetta six-speed manual uh, has pretty long throws. It's not, it's not one of the best ones on the market, whereas the Civic Si transmission, the manual, is phenomenal. One of the all-time greats. It doesn't help that we're driving into the sun today, but the chassis soaks up this pretty uneven, bumpy paved road quite well. So you can maintain pretty high speeds without getting shaken. The other thing I noticed is these seats, I don't think they're as good as the GTI seats. I feel like they're just not quite as snug, but subtle differences, you know? Yeah, the, the sidewalls on these Hankooks are a little soft. I can feel, I can feel the car a little bit in the turns. It just doesn't quite have the preciseness that we would have with a set of Michelin summer tires. But that's an easy thing to, to, uh, to get once you've worn these out. Traction control kicked in there, a little bit of wheel scrabble on a tight right-hander as I turned there, but it's what you'd expect when the front wheels are driven. I mean, I love GTIs. I've been driving them for years since like the very first Mark I, and I've loved them ever since. And so, you know, this is essentially a GTI in a different suit. Genuinely impressed with this car. Now the question is, is will there be a 2023 model? Will there be a 24? Let's hope so. We like the fact that uh, VW is still selling gas-powered, fun little cars for us to drive around in. So what do we think? Well, this GTI with the trunk, or Jetta GLI, is probably the most dynamically rewarding GLI that VW has ever built. And it's $7,500 cheaper than a GTI. Yes, it's not quite so fast, it's not quite as good in the turns, but it is a very fun drive. And you get leather seats, you get Wi-Fi charging, you get a whole bunch of goodies on the inside for $32,780. So even though I've never liked the Jetta in the past, this one is definitely becoming one of my favorite. Anyway, the choice is ultimately yours. Once again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time with another video. Out.